It is Monday morning, literally, barely, but literally. Welcome to uh, React Court. We're going to be looking at R, Am I the Asshole Filtered. I just realized, like, the O in Am I the Asshole, you can't see the art, blessed, uh, for you, but it's actually meant to be like a puckered butthole. Anyway, by the way, this episode is sponsored by Azure. Automate machine learning to increase developer productivity with Azure. Get started with 12 months of free services. Use code... Hardcore history for your free audiobook download. Am I the asshole for wanting my girlfriend to work out more than just legs? Apparently, they've already spoken for us here. Let's see. Me and my girlfriend have... By the way, can I just... I like to judge by the headlines to begin with, okay? the Are you an asshole for wanting your girlfriend to work out more than just legs? Not necessarily. I mean, I feel like you could have someone's best interest in mind and want them to work out more than, you know, just one muscle group. But I'm, I, I have a feeling that there's some weirdo energy coming off of this. Let's see. Hey, Fishy Head. Thank you for the gifted subscriptions. It, it's not going to buy you influence in React Court, but I appreciate it. Me and my girlfriend of two years regularly go to the gym. She started recently, and she seems to only do leg workouts, and we barely interact with each other at the gym because I'd like to work on my whole body. Who cares? So the other day, I asked if she wanted to work out with me so we can have the same workout routine. That's when she replied with, I don't want to, as she continues her, her only legs workout program. You, I, I'm already interrupting myself. I apologize. You're at the gym. Who cares? Wait, we don't, you don't work out together? You go to the gym together. You're, you're not, you know, joined at the hip. You can spend time apart for like an hour or, or 90 minutes or whatever and then just meet and, you know, get a smoothie and go home or something. Like, I don't understand why you got to be in the exa exact same area of the gym nonstop. But anyway, I tried to name some benefits of working the entire body by saying you'll see progress on your legs way faster if you include your upper body so your legs have time to recover and rest. I know she wants to be in her f peak physique, but she thinks peak physique only means having a big butt. I personally care more about her other muscles improving, such as her chest and back. Now, I don't mind her body right now, as that's the body I fell in love with, but I just wish she didn't take the advice the wrong way. Is this guy stupid? <laughs> I just don't understand. Look, I... This is what happens, and, and I've kind of been there. I haven't been there for a while, but, uh, you know, when you, when you get into lifting, if you get semi-serious into it, you stop uh, using your normal brain, and instead, the first thing you think of when you see people is like, oh, man, look at, like, the striations on their deltoids. That's crazy. Oh, my God, look at, like... You can actually see like the separation between the different muscles on their on their shoulder blades. Like that's insane. So like instead of just letting your girlfriend, you know, build up a, a, a legendary dumpy, what are you what are you talking about when you say I'm more concerned with like the muscles in her chest and her back? I don't mean to be rude. Like it's it's I actually agree philosophically. It, it makes sense to work out your whole body, but to, to get so anal about it, if you'll forgive the wordplay, just seems a little bit just seems a little bit silly. And instead, you, you're like, dude, she, do, I know you're probably going to other forums and you're like, dude, chicks are so stupid, they don't even care about their lat spread. But like in the real world, you, you messed up. You messed up in a big way. I feel like there's no convincing her without putting it in her head that she's not good enough. Which she 100% is in my eyes. Are you, you're, so you're like a psychopath. There's no way to, am I the asshole for uh, coming up with the idea to psychically manipulate my girlfriend to get her to work out her chest? I haven't spoken about it since that day because she seemed super irritated when I gave her reasons to work out with me. A, a broken watch is right twice a day. Am I the asshole for giving her advice and wanting her to work her full body? This is something that comes up in almost every Am I the Asshole post where OP is an asshole, is the story here does not lead to the conclusion, logically speaking. There's so many details here that, may, like, if you just had the sentence, oh, I guess I'm a dickhead because I want you to have healthy muscles all over your body. No, you're maybe... I mean, I don't even know if you're a dickhead here. 
so far. I just think you got a little bit of a weirdo energy. Um, and maybe you've, you've taken the gym pill a little bit too much rather than caring about your relationship. But this is also the asshole classic, which is, uh, you know, you're the asshole if you've made five edits to try to clarify or fight back edit. I think some of you are misinterpreting what I meant, which is your fault. I didn't constantly tell her to work out her full body. I only gave her simple advice that I would take from somebody else because I was afraid of being by myself in the gym. We only had one conversation about it, and I left it at that ever since. Also, when I say she started recently, I mean she started at the beginning of the year. Hey, that's eight months ago. That's not like... I thought it was like a month ago. She's been doing this for eight months. No wonder she's taken uh, a little bit more offense. Because on top of being, you know, maybe advice she didn't want to hear in the first place, she's also got her own expertise to some extent. I'm nothing but proud of her and her accomplishments, except for this one thing that led me to make this post. This conversation only happened once. You've mentioned that. For those who keep using the words keep on. Also, does it help that I was having this convo? With a smile on my face. <laughs> Lol. Final edit. Thanks for the feedback. I didn't expect so many comments. Just a heads up. Me and my girlfriend are extremely uh, loud and incredibly close. And the topic wasn't as harsh as you guys think. It was a one and done convo. She was irritated at the moment, but brushed it off. Legs for days. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. So the moral of you guys' feedback is don't give unsolicited advice. I'll keep that duly noted. Girlfriend only works out legs and, oh, this is the TLDR. This is, I mean, look, I, the energy radiating off of the post, I'm not a huge fan of. I'm realizing now, though, this is pretty low-key. Like, this is, I'm, I, you know what the problem was? I wasn't on top post of the week. This is top post of the day. So we're actually, you know, this is like a, this is like a, a spark. And we're looking for a raging inferno. So let me go top posts of, of this week. Wow, Loki. And, you know, as soon as we got our warm-up out of the way, here's the inferno, okay? Am I the asshole for not allowing my employees to keep tampons or pads in our bathroom at work? I'm just eager to see what the result could possibly be. Or, like, what the reason could possibly be. I've got to know why you would say no. Please tell me it's not period gross. Little background. <laughs> I manage it. Oh, okay. So you're not even the owner, but it, like, let's not go there yet. Oh my God, there's so many edits. Holy crap. Okay. Little background. I manage a retail store for a relatively smallish company. It's only got 70 or so locations. I currently have two female employees on my staff in their early or mid-20s. I am a male in my early 30s. Yesterday, I found a box of tampons in the bathroom at our store. Our store only has one bathroom, so by default, it is also our customer-accessible bathroom. Some of our stores, just by nature of whatever the building was used for before we bought them, also have employee bathrooms, but ours only has one single-person bathroom that is on the sales floor. One of my female employees had left them in the bathroom. I informed her that while there's nothing wrong with keeping feminine hygiene products at the... I've got no problem in principle with feminine hygiene products being left in the bathroom. But I'm just not sure it's a great fit for our bathroom, personally. She said, uh, wait, they would need to be kept in the office and could not be kept in the bathroom. She said that she thought that was sexist. I told her that it has nothing to do with the fact that it's a feminine hygiene product, but because it's a personal use product that we don't want to have kept in the bathroom available to our customers, and that if a male or female employee wanted to keep a razor, toothbrush, deodorant in the bathroom, that would be prohibited as well. She said that's not the same thing as those are all personal use products everyone uses, not just women. Okay, here's where I get myself into trouble, okay? I... You know how I came across at the start of this, okay? Okay. <laughs> I thought it was an employees-only bathroom, especially I thought, you know, that it was a women's bathroom, and as a result, having that stuff in there makes perfect sense. If it's a bathroom that's also used by customers, I don't care, sincerely. If I walk into a bathroom and it's just covered in anything, if I gotta go, I gotta go. I don't mind. Um... I, I, I think the argument to analogy about it being the same as like a toothbrush or deodorant is a little bit different. Like, 
you know, it's not like your armpits start leaking blood uh, if you don't have the tools necessary to to handle them in the moment. Uh, but I can at, at least it's not as bad as I originally thought, which was that this manager was like, please don't change, you know, your your feminine hygiene products inside of the women's bathroom. <laughs> Tweet from NL. I would like to apologize for my words. Twit longer link. Anyway, I'm just saying I, it, it's not as much of assholery as I, he's not overstepping his bounds to the same extent, I would think, that I originally thought it would be. My other female employee understands this policy, doesn't see anything wrong with it. The male employees aren't really relevant to the situation, but I would wager that they agree. That's not really um, a data point that you can use, I think. <laughs> Can you can you do that? I haven't asked them their opinion, but I would wager that they probably agree. Also, like, who cares? Um, and I, yeah, I, putting myself in the shoes of uh, of a male employee, I think I absolutely would not care at all. I would be like, I just put it in there, man. Doesn't bother me. I haven't discussed them with it because it doesn't seem relevant. The upset female employee, however, finds it to be sexist and wants to discuss it with HR, which I told her I would be more than happy to facilitate a conversation with concerning this. While this is not a documented company policy, I feel as though it's common sense to not keep personal hygiene products in a place customers will be and that HR will agree. I don't think so. I, uh... I mean... I think it's possible that HR might agree. But I don't think that means that HR is right. I mean, I think that just means that HR is is trying to do absolutely anything that could minimize the odds of like a batshit insane liability or like some kind of uh, psycho going into the bathroom and being like, tampons, I'll never shop at Fry's Electronics again. Um I've always had a reputation as being one of the better general managers in our company. I haven't asked anybody about it, but I think they would agree, especially in terms of low turnover and high employee morale. I don't want my employee to feel as though she's being discriminated against because she's a wonderful person and a great employee. But I just don't see how this is sexist. Well, who's using the tampons and who's not, I guess would be my question on that one. I can see your point that men don't really have an equivalent male exclusive item, but I don't see how that changes anything in this specific instance. Uh, am I missing something? Okay, here's the edits. Here we go. You know, you know, and I, I hate to do the King Solomon. I always do the King Solomon on this stuff, right? Would it be possible to maybe like, what, what if you installed like a little cabinet below the sink or something like that? Uh, and then you could have an area that maybe the employees could put stuff in and then the customers don't have to see it. And if they start like opening up the cabinet, that's their own problem. Like that seems totally fine. I mean, how, how much does it take to install a cabinet? What, like $25,000? I'm joking, I'm joking. Okay, sorry. This isn't, okay. I, I, you know what annoys me about, people don't know how to argue, okay? And it pisses me off. I, I apologize for the rudeness, but they don't, in order to get their point made, instead of strengthening their argument by making another point, they just repeat something that they got across earlier and try to get a second bit of argument strength for it. Number one, this is not a female bathroom. It's a single toilet unisex bathroom. It's the size of a closet and has a toilet and a sink. Yes, you've mentioned that. This uh, Strike it out. It doesn't matter. This is like when you're watching Impractical Jokers and they're given a presentation and they click the slide and there's like one of them's naked lying in a bed. They're like, that's Sal's bed. You're like, I, I gleaned that. Click, that's Sal's. I'm walking on Sal's carpet with muddy shoes. I, that's Sal's carpet. I know it's Sal's carpet. It's, it's implied in the way. That's his dog. I know, okay? You already said this stuff. You don't need to restate it. This is not my business. So installing a tampon or pad dispenser, which I had a thousand percent support, is not remotely my decision. Look, okay? It's not that there's tampons 
in the bathroom. It's that they're not locked in a vending machine. That's the problem. They're just there. Anybody could grab them. A kid could take them, shove them up his nose. You know, pretend he's Larry David from Season 7, Curb Your Enthusiasm. If you just put it in like a little dispenser and you could turn a crank and then they could come out, then it's fine. My employee did not intend the tampons for use by customers or other employees. I asked. Again, I, I don't see how it's relevant. This, is, this seems a bit like a straw man to me. I'm not objecting to the tampons because I don't understand how periods work. I'm grossed out. But because it could really cause problems if an auditor comes in and sees what they will see as a personal use product left in a public area. I can't verify that this would actually happen. But it seems insane to me. I, I And again, I, I don't work in business... <laughs> inspection <laughs> um but i do look at like the vancouver restaurant shutdown list i've never seen one that said uh because they they transparently released the information they've never in my entire life reading them i've never seen one that was like there was wrapped tampons in the bathroom um Usually it's no hot water, no hot water, rat infestation, no hot water. There's a lot of no hot water. I'm not, again, I don't work in this. I'm just saying, can they, <laughs> no, no hot rats. Yeah, exactly. But like how, I just don't understand the argument that you could, like have like toilet paper is fine and like a garbage can that's full of people's snot or whatever is totally fine but like a wrapped tampax is like that's across the line i, don't, I know people are going to be like auditors are crazy and the, but i need like i i would need to see like a specific example there yeah you're right it, it sounds like it's like the tampon gestapo is coming around is it <laughs> are you are you harboring any Tampax? <laughs> yeah, they're just on the counter. They're just on the sink. Um, okay, I'm not objecting because they think they're gross or whatever. Uh, edit, just a couple more clarifying points. This has been a pretty split decision so far. In... in always but the literal um it is a very small store have i mentioned the size of this place the 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 tampons make up a large amount of the density of the store we've already established the bathroom is very small the tampon is the store is so itty bitty the tampons are so noticeable like you gotta you gotta move around them just to get down the aisle 10 there's no cabinet under the sink or space for a cab. There's no space for a cabinet. I refuse to believe this. I don't buy it for a damn. What do you mean there's no space for a cabinet? Well, you don't have floors? How do you, do you just open a mail slot and stick your you know what in and then pee in the toilet? I don't understand. It's so small. The only places to put anything is the floor on the sink itself or on top of the toilet. That being said, a proprietary wall-mounted dispenser could work. It's not possible to mount a cabinet, but a, a dispenser could theoretically work. <laughs> Something that holds tampons could not fit. Unless it also had a large metal crank on the front of it and a coin slot that you could put a quarter into. Otherwise, it's not possible to put any kind of mechanism that could hold these things. I'm not permitted to make changes like that to the facilities. I will bring up the option with HR. The office is roughly 10 steps from the bathroom at most. They are right next to each other. Objection, Your Honor. Relevance. We have one or two employees on shift at a time. If there's one employee, they're encouraged to place a pre-made bathroom sign on the store's door and lock the door, no question asked. 
I will readily admit my examples were not a good comparison and not well thought out. In my fourth edit on my second edit, okay, now this is the, this is an uh, appeal to uh, to his hurt feelings. To the people saying I'm an immature misogynist, insecure in my own masculinity, who's grossed out by menstruation and tampons, you're entitled to your opinion, but I'm just not. I've always been perfectly comfortable with my SOs and female roommates, keeping whatever they need wherever they need it. It's just that the sanctity of a, of a Fry's electronics, it's just different, okay? In your house, if you want to keep that riffraff around, go by all means. Tampons, open drugs, whatever. Pretty much on the same level in, in my eyes. The sanctity of the corporate environment. Is it, is it too much to ask that we just treat it with the respect and decorum that it deserves? I will update this post after our conversation with HR, which has already been scheduled for tomorrow. Posted six days ago. Um, okay. I mean, look, I, we, we have fun here. I don't think, based on this post, and you, you, you know, you're only getting a thin slice of a person's life. I don't think that he's an immature misogynist, in, insecure in his own masculinity. I do feel... Like, maybe he, he's putting... I mean, let me put it this way. He's, he's got a little bit of a Dwight uh, Schrute energy to him. Like, he clearly takes the, the station of his office as one of the general managers at this relatively smallish company very seriously and is, is upset about anything that could possibly move up the chain and reflect badly on him. Uh... That being said, I really don't... <laughs> I mean, maybe... I was going to say maybe I'm the asshole, but I don't think that's true. I just don't see the problem. It's one of those things where I'm like... With, when something's this minor and people are like, well, people might complain if we do it. I'm like, well, just why don't you do it? And then if people complain, we'll talk about it. And if people don't complain, then you got nothing to worry about. Just chill out, Point Dexter. Like, there's nothing to, nothing to worry about. I, I just, I, I, I agree. I think it's kind of making a mountain out of a molehill. This is North America. So, like, I'm not saying this is just an American thing, but it's so fucked up, like, how scared companies are of their customers. <laughs> I mean, I guess in a way it's a good thing. But, like, you know, I, I think within reason. Like, you shouldn't be in an environment where, like, the company is just bending you over. But instead, it's like, you, you know, the, the manager is worried, like, the most insane person on earth will walk into the bathroom and be like, you reminded me of my menstrual cycle. I spend $15,000 a month at this Applebee's and I'm never coming back now. Like, it's just disgust. There's children here that could see the, the, the pad with the wings on it. And it, then how are they supposed to eat their infinite jalapeno poppers with that information? Like, it's just... Uh, I mean, I, I guess I kind of feel for, like, the... I feel for the manager to the extent that he feels so scared of both the tampon auditor and, like, his own customers. Like, that sucks. But at the same... I think you gotta kind of... I don't I'm, I, I'm torn on this one. Because I am also, like... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where I'm at on this one. I think he's more in the wrong. And I think, quite frankly... His uh, fixation on a dispenser being okay, but a, uh, a cabinet not being possible. Like, you know, you could just make the... I mean, I'm not saying he should do it, but you can get, like, a custom-made cabinet that's only, like, you know, is, is to the size that you want it to be made. They make itty-bitty ones, much like your bathroom. They make enormous ones, much like some of the other stores, but not yours, as you've made very clear. Um, I think I think if you just do that, you're you're fine, but I think you're... I think you got to be careful because if you're like, it doesn't bother me, but it could bother other people. You got to figure out like where you stand on that. If it's like, you know, 
having like your bottle out while you, when you're at work. I could see his point that some people might take offense to that, even if it wouldn't bother me. But in this situation, I think that it strikes me more as something that he's like, I don't like it, and I'm gonna like gaslight you into thinking that the average person on planet Earth out here is like gonna be super offended by seeing this stuff. I think he's he's my hunch, and I'm just one person, is that he's so he's using a fictional average person as a substitution for his own aversion to this for whatever reason. That's my two cents. But I do also feel, yeah, it sounds like Corpus kind of stinky. So I feel I don't think he's a huge asshole. I feel like he's a, a bit of a, I don't know. I mean, in for a situation that's so minor, I feel like if you're a good manager, you got to stick out your neck for your employees instead of sticking out your neck for a customer you haven't even met. The, it may or may not even exist. Am I the... By the way, build on your terms from anywhere. Microsoft Azure. Sponsoring this episode. Uh, am I the asshole for blasting copyrighted music? Anybody, some, anytime somebody tries to TikTok video on the bus or train, am I am on to get them strikes? As somebody who is a social media uh, content creator, uh, no. Just based on this, not the asshole. I, despite being a content creator, I get, well, I guess it's literally an asshole move. Don't get me wrong. But I also, I mean, if it doesn't concern you, I guess. Yeah, wait, I'm coming back on this. That being said, I, you know what? I made the classic, am I the asshole Redditor mistake? I agreed with them that the people he's being an asshole to are annoying and assumed you can't be an asshole to annoying people. I, I appreciate that I was called out by chat there. That being said, I, I get annoyed, you know, when people are filming social media stuff in public, even as hypocritical as it is. But let's, let's see. I've done this at least six or seven times. But the most recent time made me curious. So some girl a few days ago on the bus I ride regularly had her friend take her phone out and start recording for TikTok. And I quickly started playing Disney music, then asked them to stop because I don't care for being recorded. She lost her shit, yelled at me, called me an asshole, told me to turn the music off, and even tried to get me kicked off the bus when I refused. I turned it back on every time they tried to record, purely to make sure they could get copyright strikes if they tried to upload. So here's the question. Am I the asshole? Yes, I was in shot. They were filming from the front of the bus, and I usually sit at the back. You didn't have to tell me that. I knew you were a cool guy. Cool guys always sit at the back. I should have noted this. Several other people on the bus were annoyed, but the two girls running up and down the aisles with their filming, I wasn't the only one. I don't have this music on my phone. I jumped to YouTube and played a video. Not sure why I need to clarify this, though. That's fine. You don't. Um, I did ask them nicely a single time to stop, or at the very least record with me behind the girl with the camera. I was ignored. Hmm. Um, I'm kind of with Chet where I'm like, I'm not, I don't totally believe that this story happened. But I will also say I've ridden the bus, you know, for several years in Vancouver. Some shit that you would think is fake goes down all the time. People just ripping open bags or like spring mix and, and digging in with their hands and stuff like that. I got I got cyber bullied IRL because I was the the bus got this. It, I'll, I'll give you the cliff notes. Our bus got clipped by a drunk driver. We all had to get off the bus in order to make sure there was no damage. We all got back on the bus. I was the last person on the bus, and I sat in one of the seats at the front that is prioritized for the elderly uh, and people with mobility issues. And uh, then somebody at the back of the bus just started yelling at me and just went off for like 20 minutes and was saying some stuff that I will not repeat to begin with. But I was, my, look, is this, if we're going into the am I the asshole, I still maintain I'm not the asshole. You don't have to give up. You don't have to abstain from the seats until somebody comes on. Like if there's, you know, 12 seats like that, you wait, if you can at least, you wait until somebody comes on and then you go, I'm the first person to stand up. Even when, like, just when a lot of people come on the bus, I'm like, I'll stand up. Because I just like standing, man. I sit down all day. But anyway, they're not for those passengers only. 
It's for those passengers when they're on the bus anyway. Yeah, people, they want to make problems for no reason. Anyway, long story short, um, that it's long story done, I guess. Uh, but either way, edit seven, the seats on the bus were blue. I'm not sure why this matters. I'm not sure why I was forced to make this edit. Uh, I mean, I don't know what to say, man. I don't, I don't know what to say, okay? I, I really thought this said, yes, I was shot. I mean, if they're being kind of belligerent, you know, if, if they, if, if, let's take, let's assume this happened at face value rather than selectively discounting stuff uh, that feels like it's fake. If we take him at his word and he asked them politely to stop or at least allow him to get out of frame and they ignored it, then I don't feel like he's an asshole. If he said that he did that because it makes him less of the asshole, then he's kind of an asshole. It does say he's done it seven times, which is genuinely hilarious. <laughs> I just can't imagine. It's like TikTok's only really been around for like two years, so you're telling me that he's... He's doing this like, you know, once every four months or something like that. Um, but it is also ignorant to uh, to film in public, especially like it's not like they were filming like a vlog or something, which can still be annoying, but it sounds like they were like running up and down the aisles. That's annoying. Um, I don't know. This, I, I'm, I'm kind of of like the, I'm kind of in the everybody sucks here camp, I guess. I kind of want to see some more comments. Let, let's see. He's got seven teardrops tattooed. Under his eyelid. Well, not under his eyelid, I hope. Okay, so here's the classic, okay? Your bus, your rules. Um... Maybe you're an asshole, but the people who start recording on public transportation deserve what they get. It's the, this is exactly where I started. I think we can move from there. Um, <laughs> they deserve what they... I don't know if you could ever say you deserve what you get. What if, what if he, like, you know, smashed him in the kneecap with a tire iron, gave him the Tanya Harding? Not the asshole. People can TikTok all the live long day, but they need to be mindful of other people's right to not be involved. I, I agree. Okay. LOL, as if they cared. I know them personally. This happened to my buddy, Eric. We're all most likely in one TikTok per day without even knowing it. Most, most, we're as if they cared. Source, dude, just trust me. We're all most likely in one TikTok per day without even knowing it. Source, dude, just trust me. 146 upvotes, by the way. Not the asshole. People need to be more respectful of people around them. So much this. You're genius. Definitely not the asshole. TikTok is the asshole. Updutes, really? Wow, updutes? Thank you so much for the gold kind, stranger. Info. Were you actually in shot or was it an option to move seats to be out of shot rather than blasting music to annoy the whole bus, not just those filming? Why should he have to get up and move seats? Why should they inconvenience everybody else? Well, you, you, look, you're not going to love this, okay? Because it's the fucking bus. It sucks. Like, it's great. It's cheap. It goes to most of the places you want to go. But you got to be around other people. That's, you know, this, it's a public space. That's, that's kind of the deal. Why should I ever have to change my life for anybody else? Not the asshole. Sure, you no, know, I, look, I, maybe the comments are not that good here. <laughs> good for you, I'm sick of this crap in public places. I haven't left my house in six months, but in my head it's just constant. You can't even walk to the grocery store anymore without... Tons of uh, these freaking Zoomers with their TikToks out. Probably leaving their tampons everywhere in public places, wrapped up in sanitary paper, haven't even been opened yet. It's crazy. Okay, I, it, I had to scroll for a bit. 
I'm going to go and, and this is finally one that agrees with me. I'm going to go and say everybody sucks here. Filming TikTok in public areas is annoying, but they also have to understand people around them won't want to be filmed or that there are copyrighted materials all over. They suck for that, but at the same time, blasting music in public transportation is really annoying and obnoxious. I would have been annoyed with the both of you. That's, I think, if you, if you put yourself in the mindset of just the other people on the train, instead of just having to, um, you know, deal with some annoying teenagers... Now you've got uh, two annoying teenagers and then also a Reddit, Cairo Sejiro, who is like, I'm going to be the, the train defender by playing a whole new world by Disney and, and starting a fight on the bus. Like, you know, it, it, it happens now and then on the bus or the train. People will do like asshole stuff. I am so thankful that whenever, like, I'm on the Sky Train and somebody says, like, you know, I remember one time I was on the Sky Train and... This dude just kept going like the people getting on the sky train with their fucking backpacks. You got to take your fucking backpack off and put it on the ground so there's room for everything. And he was getting like, <sighs> and I just kind of like looked to my left and looked to my right. And I was surrounded by normies who were just going, we know how you deal with this situation. You don't go, excuse me, sir. Can you not use so many cuss words on the train? You just, you know... Wait till there you wait till your stop or their stop. This is a run out the clock situation where we just you get annoyed and then you talk about it over cocktails later. Anyway. This uh, also like I don't feel bad cuz I I don't think this story uh happened. <laughs> that's that's my two cents is that I'm not totally sure that this story uh took place in the real world, but um Am I the asshole for refusing to go to a concert with my wife after she called the lead singer her dream man? That de this all depends on the band, as far as I'm concerned. If it's like 30 seconds to Mars, then we got to have a conversation. <laughs> it's Bono? Oh, no. It's Sugar Ray. That's even worse, man. Okay, please tell me the band. I gotta know. My wife is a big fan of rock music. <laughs> Crazy. About a month ago, she started going on about one of her favorite bands and how cute and talented the lead singer is. Of course, that's no problem. I'm not jealous of a random celebrity. However, she then proceeded to tell me this lead singer is her exact type and her dream man. She even said at one point, if only he wasn't married, but tried to make it sound like a joke. Okay, look, this. That's pretty bad. Like, I mean, you you can say, like, oh, they're cute, they're attractive, like, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but when you when you take it a step further than that, if it, it it depends on how it came across, okay? It depends on how the joke came across. You don't have to be insecure, like. If somebody was like, oh, if only he wasn't married, I'd totally be into that. Or if only I wasn't married, I'd totally be into that. I don't think that in every situation you could just be like, oh, flip the script. Like, what if the husband said that about, like, Paramore or something like that? You know, I, I, but in this situation, because it strengthens my point, I'm like, what if you flip the script on this one? For context, this man literally could not be more different from me. I'm on the bigger side, mixed race, short hair, and the musician is a skinny white dude with long hair. I'm just laughing. I didn't expect that there would be a, <laughs> a race component here, but okay. Um, I know she didn't mean it to be hurtful towards me, but it kind of stung to hear straight up how different I am from her dream type appearance-wise. And her comments brought up some insecurities that I thought I'd gotten over. It wasn't a big deal. So I didn't let her know this upset me at the time and moved on from it. Turns out the band is coming to our city in a few weeks. My wife originally wasn't able to get tickets since they're so expensive. But this morning she texted me her co-worker bought tickets but can't make it and is willing to resell the two tickets at a much lower price. She called me to confirm that I would go with her and she should go ahead and get the tickets. I took a minute, but I said, oh, no. Honestly, I'd rather not accompany you to a concert where you're just going to be fawning over your dream man the whole time. Ooh. <laughs> that's one that clearly you've been turning over and over in your head in the shower for like 
three weeks and it just well, it, sometimes just the most venomous kind of 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 message can come out of your brain fully formed and it's clear that you've been thinking about this way longer than the person who casually asked the question that's that's cringe i don't i don't say that word often but that's a little cringe clearly the wound had been festering but by the way also owned great line like you turned it around on her and you turned it around on her in a position where uh, you have leverage because apparently she needs your permission. So, you know, it, it, clearly someone here has read The Art of the Deal. She seemed totally shocked by this and responded, why are you making this about you? We talked it out for a bit, but I didn't back down and told her I'm not interested in going. She can, of course, take a friend or someone else, but I simply don't feel like going with her. This upset her a lot more than I thought it would, and she came home from work nearly in tears, asking why I'm being petty and selfish by not going with her. She said the lead singer is just a dumb celebrity crush she was rambling about, and it makes no sense for me to be taking it personally and making this an issue between us. I told her I'm not mad at her or trying to... Honey, I'm not trying to start drama with you. You're my wife. I don't want to start drama with you. I just would prefer not to accompany her to this particular show. We haven't talked since last night, and I don't really feel like apologizing. Am I the asshole for not budging on this? Uh, edit, for everybody asking, the band is Tame Impala. I'm not cool enough. I, I, Tame Impala was getting popular, like, right as I stopped listening to any song that came out from that point forward. So, as, as soon as... Real estate came out with Beachcomber. I was done. I was like, I'm full. Lead singer kind of looks like Jesus. Okay. Does he did talk like an animal? Do you remember when you... Yeah. Talks like a gentleman, not like an animal. What am I talking about? Anyway. Um, look, I don't like the killers either. <laughs> I'm surprised, Okay. Because I think uh, the judgment is not the asshole. Keep in mind how I started with this, by the way, was by saying that I think she went a little bit over the, the line. Um, but I think he's definitely the asshole. Like, he took... You know what this is? And you, you can really, like, make Am I the Asshole posts as I think you should leave sketches. This is a uh, guy and his wife go to a magic show... The magician humiliates the guy. The wife stokes the guy's insecurities. And then the guy goes back on stage and goes, I make ten times what you make. Well, you wouldn't know it from that suit. You ruined my life. <laughs> it's just, uh, I'm just, uh, I, I, I think his response, he clear, his feelings were hurt. But your feelings can be hurt, and then the action you take as a result of that can be not commensurate with the slight that led to your feelings being hurt in the first place. And just because maybe the first stone was not thrown by you, that doesn't mean that you're not the asshole for the way that you responded. However, I don't even think he's like a huge asshole for saying... I don't want to go with you to a concert where you're just going to be fawning over your dream, man. I think that's an asshole move, but if he at least, with the benefit of hindsight, what appears to be like 18 to 24 hours later, if he had just been like, hey, I'm sorry that I hit you with a nuclear bomb when you asked me if I wanted to go to the concert, but my feelings were actually hurt by all the things that you said about the lead singer in the first place, then it would be cool, but then there also would not be a post because instead he has gone to Reddit and been like, am I the asshole? So I think if, if the, the longer this situation goes on for, the more that you're kind of the asshole here for sure. Like, you, the fact that you haven't... I mean, like, you... is I She's not gonna... I leave you for the lead singer of Tame Impala, okay? And if she does, you can get, like, a lot of play on, like, the talk show circuit, get interviewed by Pitchfork and stuff like that. You you know, like, you got an avenue to exploit there. It's just a concert. You're, it's good. Just take her to the concert, and then, like, it's fine. Like, I don't know. It's... Who cares? I just don't... I, I guess I, I... I get that his feelings were hurt, but when you look at it from a rational standpoint, I'm just like... 
Why don't you just apologize to your wife, go to the concert? They're a well-liked band, right? <laughs> Are they good? If it was Imagine Dragons, I'd be like, hit the gym, but... Like, get over it, man. I guess it's... It, and by the way, this not to the same extent, but this happens to me now and then. Kate will watch like a K-pop video and be like, oh, G-Dragon's so hot. I'm like the anti-G-Dragon. I'm just like, okay. Whatever. Like, what are you... <laughs> If Big Bang came to Vancouver and she was like, do you want to come to the concert? I would be like, let's go. I know this. So they go, hey, hey, hey. They're going to think I worked there, but, you know, that's fine. What the hell is G-Dragon? He's a bad boy. He smoked marijuana in a Japanese uh, bathroom. It was a big, a big uh, controversy in 2011. Because in, in South Korea, pop stars don't do bad boy stuff. They're like the, the, the way that they're bad boys is like by having an earring. Whereas in North America, if you're like a bad boy, you'd like, you know, throw a TV out of your hotel room window or something like that. <laughs> in South Korea, it's like he took a puff of a joint in a, in a Japanese bathroom stall. Anyway, um... Yeah, okay, there was that one guy. We don't need to, he got sentenced like a couple years or uh, to a few years in prison last week, right? Anyway, um that that's not a bad boy. That's a bad guy. That's two different things. The bad boy is like a a veneer. He's just a bad person, okay? This there's a distinction there. I, do, I, want, I want to see the comments here, because it's always more fun to look at the comments when you disagree, right? Um, let, let's, let's see on this one. I already know, and I, I hate to like hand wave this away as if it's not like a real problem, by the way. Um, 42 may be the answer to life, the universe, and everything. It's this, dude, so much this. But when it comes to your team's processes, you need a platform that's customized to your needs. On Monday.com, you can build the perfect project management tools for your workflows. Um, so much this, man. I, I already know that my assumption is that some of the uh, comments that are up near the top are going to be things that are like, not the asshole, she way crossed the line, your feelings were hurt, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, but I'm, I don't know, maybe it's difference of opinion, maybe it's difference in perspective, but I am also kind of like, if your feelings can get, you, if your feelings get hurt and you're gonna like fester on it, you also have to take some responsibility for not telling her that at the time. You know, if, if, if you really were bothered by something and you're gonna let it simmer and build resentment and then come back with like, uh, you know, uh, an uppercut later when you get jabbed slightly, then you had a responsibility that you messed up a little earlier to be like, hey, that's over the line. At which point you wouldn't have had to worry about it at all. You know, because would, she would have been like, oh, I apologize. And then, you know, what I mean, it's always easier in hindsight, but I'm actually super surprised with all the you're the asshole here. It's not like you're preventing her from going to the concert. I, too, think of every dispute that happens in a marriage as, uh, you know, being a set of pros and cons. And it's more of like a, a, a tort law dispute as opposed to, you know, two individuals with responsibilities and commitment and feelings. It's not like you're, she can still go to the concert. She'll just not be able to enjoy it at all because she'll be thinking about the fact that, you know, her husband is mad at her for being at the concert. You just don't want to go with her. I can understand how it may be a bit hurtful to hear your wife constantly go on about wishing she was with someone else. It doesn't matter if it's a complete fantasy. That would never happen. Saying someone the exact opposite of you is her exact type sounds harsh. Maybe she didn't mean it that way. Maybe you wrote it in a way that reflects as poorly on her as possible. Or, or maybe not. Um, but I don't think it's unreasonable for you to be hurt. Let her find a friend to go to with her. Agreed, but often the replies are from children who shouldn't even be allowed on the internet. I feel bad they're even allowed to be giving ratings in this sub. Or the replies 
are from relationships where they shared celebrity crushes without the SO getting jealous. Oh, man. I'm 18, and this is what the real world is like. So many kids, so many eight-year-olds logging on to Am I the Asshole, writing essays about uh, how they should solve their relationship problems. Not the asshole. Your feelings are valid. You're not being malicious. Can I, and again, I could, I could be wrong. This is, I, where, where I consider myself superior to most of the comments, to be honest, is that I always like this. This is not me coming from on high, giving my objective viewpoint of how things go. It's just my, giving my opinion in two cents, okay? I'm not saying this is definitively the right way. I think if your wife says, can we go to this concert for my favorite band? And then you reply... Honestly, I'd rather not accompany you to a concert where you're just going to be fawning over your dream man the whole time. That's malicious. Because you, this is a comment designed to get back at someone because they hurt your feelings. Like, you're like, I'm going to... This is not, like, what you say when you want to come to a solution. This is like... I'm going to get back at you because you made me feel bad. So I'm going to like flip the script on it. That's he should have said, yeah, after he said that and she started to cry, he's supposed to go, who said that? To try to like diffuse the situation a little bit. You ruined my life. Um, okay, hold on. She blinds, she's blindsided and upset now because your legitimate feelings appear to come out of nowhere. Yes. Correct. This, this, I, I disagree with this part, but I totally agree with this part. If, if your feelings were hurt, you should have said something about it then. I mean, again, perfect world, but I'm surprised by all you're the assholes. I'm fairly certain if it was a man fawning over a female celebrity and his wife was uncomfortable, no one would call her an asshole. Um... You know, let me think about that for a second. We're we're because uh, I flipped the script and now he's flipping the script on me. All right, I'm willing to I'm willing to cede that point. I think if you flipped the exact same situation, um, he would come across like an asshole. But there is also the and again this you get yourself in trouble with this one, but still. Um, what, what the F man? <laughs> I'm just saying the cultural norm, I think, and again, I could be wrong. The cultural norm, it's more normal for a, a wife to talk about her celebrity crushes than the husband. I don't know why it is. I didn't create the culture. I'm I'm a participant actively feeding into it as time goes on. But it would be like a, 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 a wife being like, oh, my celebrity crush is like Antonio Banderas. That's like a, something that doesn't cross the bounds of normalcy that happens all the time. But if, if I was, and they wouldn't make me uncomfortable if I was like having dinner with, uh, you know, if I was on a double date or something. And then my friend's wife was like, oh, you know, like I love Joel McHale. I would be like, okay, that's normal. If... If he said, yeah, I want to fuck Alison Brie, I would be like, okay, maybe we should just calm down a little bit. All this talk about community has, everybody's getting heated. <laughs> so this whoopee cushion is getting, <laughs> this whoopee cushion's gotten everybody too excited. That being said, I'm not saying that that's, uh, I'm not saying that that's right. I'm simply saying that that's those one of them fits more with the culture and one of them fits less with the culture whether or not that's valid you know is is a different point altogether so i'm not sure there's a situation where you can flip the script but anyway i i am stunned at the number of people who are like you aren't stopping her from going to the concert yeah like you're not restraining her from going to the concert but like you kind of are you're like in a psychological sense like, you really think that she's going to be like, okay, and then like, hey, Jenny, come to the concert with me. And like, she's going to have a great time watching her favorite band. She's not going to enjoy it knowing that this is something that's driven a wedge between her and her husband. 
It's yeah, it's an it's an ultimatum without having the the courage to offer the ultimatum in the first place. She could still go and just have terrible memories wrapped up with it. Like, come on. Not the asshole. For you to have so many differences in appearance to the singer in her outright saying that he is her exact type would make anyone make the connection that you are not her type. You have every right to take it personally. Agreed. And then we're flipping the script. However, I wish that there was just, there's like one implied sentence here. Well, the, the, actually, you're right. There's a couple of things. One is, she did marry you. So, like... You're probably like kind of her type or like one of her types <laughs> for one. And then also I was waiting for the like, you have every right to take it personally. But you should have talked about that in the moment rather than spend 20 showers concocting the perfect comeback if this situa situation ever came to pass. But instead we get the script flip again, but... Not the asshole. Why would she say this to you? Your feelings are valid. I wouldn't want to go to the concert either. I'm surprised at all the YTA comments. This is one of those it's easy to judge when it's not you situations. Look, that might be true. But look at the subreddit you're on. I mean... <laughs> that's kind of what it's there for. Hey, I've been married to my wife for 20 years. We had one argument... You know, let's d distill it down to three senses. I, if I had to guess, remember the post that was like, this is why your kids don't get along. Oh, actually, their father died in a traumatic accident when they were young that drove an emotional wedge between them. Don't care, didn't ask, plus your kids are ugly. Like, this, this is what this subreddit is made for. I'm happy to... Look, comment deleted by user. They probably got cyberbullied. User was cyberbullied for this post. I'm happy to see someone else who thinks everybody sucks. This kind of fantasy crush and sharing it with your partner is not uncommon or unreasonable. OP's wife messed up, actually hurt him. Maybe it was unintentional, probably. Okay, I, I would hope to agree. And then he messed up by pretending to himself and to her that it was no big deal, when in fact he was quite hurt by it, and it brought up insecurities for him. Good. So far, so good. Or, so far, I agree. <laughs> So she's in the wrong for going on and on about her crush to the point where it hurt OP's feelings, but OP's in the wrong for sweeping those feelings under the rug instead of talking with her honestly about them and then blindsiding her with them when she had the rare chance to purchase tickets and needed to act fast. Too reasonable for Reddit right now. So much this. Your wife loves you and doesn't want to hurt you. If she didn't give you a crap about your feelings, she would have just shrugged off your statement and said whenever and gone with a friend without batting an eye. But she does care. Your words are not the only thing she's listening to. When you say you can go, but I won't come just to watch you fawn over him. What you're communicating is, I feel like you've chosen him over me and I don't want to be faced with your feelings for him. If you go without me, it'll just solidify for me that you care more about indulging in this crush than in being with your partner. This person is better than me at the... At the React court. They're even more articulate than I am. So yeah, you're wanting to assuage your feelings by setting aside a rare chance to... You're wanting her to assuage your feelings by setting aside a rare chance to see a band she really loves instead of just doing a little introspection and admitting you have feelings and talking to her honestly about them, even if it's hard to put into words and you feel stupid. OP, please take ownership of the pieces of the piece you could have handled better in most conflicts... There's a little blame to go around for everyone. Apologize for the way you brought this up. Apologize for not telling her when she first heard your feelings. But tell her your, her words were hurtful and that you do genuinely feel she must not find you terribly attractive. If you accept her apology, the two of you can figure it out. How do you give awards on Reddit? This is like... I, the Madman Max 224. I'm not, congratulations, or I'm sorry that happened to you. I'm not going to read all that. I'm not sure she actually cares about his feelings based on her response. Like, when she came home in tears hours later, like a total bitch, and when she didn't walk through the door with a six-pack in her hand and be like, babe, I'm so sorry, you're totally right, I shredded the concert tickets, like, it, clearly she doesn't care about your feelings. I'm not sure she actually cares about his feelings based on her response. It was immature and insensitive. It's clearly bigger than some dumb celebrity crush. Based, it's, it, I wasn't there. It was clearly bigger than the celebrity crush based on the vocabulary. 
And honestly, it's genuinely hurtful to see someone you love express their desire to be with somebody else. Yes. Yes and no, I guess is what I would say. Like, <laughs> look, so you, I, I, I'm getting stunlocked by like anonymous teenagers on Reddit, but I'm just like, I just don't understand that it's like so over the, it seems like she made a joke that just like went too far. And what, she shouldn't have made it, but he also shouldn't have been like, everything's fine. It's not, I'm like a big strong guy, nothing hurts me. And then years later, well, no, maybe days later, be like, you screwed me. You've wounded me and now I finally, now that you're showing me some vulnerability, I can get back at you. The fact that she was surprised due to his lack of communication aside, her overall response was childish and incredibly immature. Reverse the, every, every comment has reversed the situation, and I doubt you would rule the same. Man. Play the Uno reverse card. Yup. Then she had the audacity to accuse him of trying to make this about him when all he's doing is expressing his feelings? He isn't telling her not to go, just that he doesn't want to spend hours watching her ogle over her obsessive celebrity crush. Fuck that manipulative shit. <laughs> so dramatic, man. I, I'm, I'm fine with an everybody sucks here, yeah. I, th I think that... Uh, her joke went too far, as we said when we started this. But also simultaneously, I think that, you know, he, he clearly then went too far in the other direction. Everybody sucks here and you're not based. You're reading it dramatically? Look at how it's written. Fuck that manipulative shit. That's, even, that's the TikTok explainer voice. I can't do it without uh, losing a piece of my spirit. Okay, slash marker, react, court, one. 